Um, so first of all, I'd, I'd like to, to thank the organisers uh, for inviting me, and I'm, I'm very flattered to be included in this such an august body. I've noticed that they've given everybody just 10 minutes to talk. Uh, this is maybe not to bore everyone, I can understand that, but I, I have to say that I've built my considerable reputation on boring people for six hours at a time. So, <laughs> So boring you for 10 minutes should be um, uh, accomplished. I, I'm, I, I'm hoping to do that. Um, I'd like to start off, if I can, with a quote from Albert Einstein. Um, we cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used when creating them. Uh, I've, I've chosen that particular quote because it's reminiscent of Penny and a particular incident that... Uh, uh, or uh, something that happened with regard to Penny. I, in 2009, it must have been about that because that's when she published it. I remember reading in the SLD Experience uh, an article on thinking and problem solving for children, young people and adults with severe learning difficulties. I was incredibly impressed with this because thinking and problem solving up until that time had been a very small part of the mass curriculum. And and almost universally was regarded as being impossible for guys with SLD simply because uh, the problems were so abstract. And of course we know that, that kids with SLD don't do abstracts. But Penny really brought this to life because she says, well, you've got to make the problems concrete. You've got to make them really obvious. And uh, she came down to the Bridge School, which is where I was working at the time, and did a whole school inset on it and and I was a disciple from there on in I thought this is fabulous this is amazing why have we why have we not done this before we ought to be uh, doing this as a major part of the curriculum um, I, I at the time I ran uh, a training center at the bridge and, and wanted to run this course my difficulty was uh, that I had to steal all of Penny's powerpoints and all of her ideas and all of her jokes and uh, I had a little bit of, because uh, she had a great sense of humour, Penny, very dry. Um, I had a, a bit of a crisis of conscience about this, you know, because I was charging people to, co to come in and, uh, well, the bridge was charging people. I wasn't getting any money out of it. But, but uh, we were charging people to come in and, and see this course on thinking and problem solving. And, of course, it was pennies. And I couldn't afford to bring her down and pay her every time uh, to come and run the course. Uh, I... I, I struggled with this for a, a little while and then eventually spoke to some people and they said, well, why don't you just uh, talk to Penny, see what she says? Uh, and I did, I emailed her and I got this amazing reply. I didn't expect this, it was just not expected. She said, ideas aren't owned by anyone. You have your own ideas, I have my own ideas, they all mingle, you put them out there, you talk to people, we have conflicts, we have discussions, we have disagreements, and eventually, hopefully, you'll arrive at something that's workable with all of those ideas going in. So I did run, uh, ran the courses, and, uh, and they're still really successful. I think one of the things that, that came across with Penny's ideas about thinking and problem solving for guys with SLD um, was that you cannot teach thinking and problem solving in the same way to children with SLD as you do to neurotypical conventionally developing children. And, and I suppose by extension this is also arguments about the curriculum. So these sort of small things have led me into uh, thinking about bigger things and maybe taking that view with the, with the curriculum. There are, there are lots of reasons why you're not able to do this, but unfortunately they've only given me 10 minutes, so I don't have time to tell you all of these reasons. But maybe there's a couple that I can add in there. Uh, one of them is that uh, kids have got to be able to work out the problem uh, in the first place before they can solve it. They've got to recognise there's a problem. And actually, for kids with SLD, what Penny said was, well, you've got to make the problem really, really obvious, otherwise they might not get it. I'm, I'm reminded of a particular story uh, in relation to this. I was talking about this to a, a school not too far from here, somewhere in, in Birmingham or Coventry, I think. And they had been doing thinking and problem solving with their kids. And um, they decided to set up a little thinking and problem solving 
uh, activity. The, uh, they had seven kids in the classroom. I think they were key stage three and four. And um, they'd all gone out to play. Whilst they were out at play, one of the teachers who was shortish of stature and needed a step ladder in order to get up to the highest uh, levels on the, in the classroom, knocked the step ladder over and then lay prone on the floor. They, they thought about adding tomato ketchup, but that might have been <laughs> maybe a bit too dramatic, you know? Uh, the kids came back in after the play, seven kids in the classroom. Six of them entirely ignored the dead body. <laughs> The seventh, the one with OCD, stepped over the body to put, step, put upright the stepladder that had fallen over. <laughs> Coming back to you know, Penny's point, you've got to, not only have you got to make the problem really obvious, you've actually got to relate it to the thinking of guys with SLD and, and make it motivating. And this is, this is one of the difficulties generally with problems. I'm really pleased you came over uh, because I've, I've got this, uh, this lectern that I've, I've made uh, on a flat pack. Um, you can see it's a little bit on the rickety side and I'm not quite sure what's happened to it. Um, and the other thing is I've got these two pieces and the two pieces don't seem to fit in with the instructions which I have no understanding of at all. What do you think I ought to do with these? You've got a square peg in a round hole. I, absolutely, I've got a square peg in a round hole. Now, I've got a square peg and a round hole in a flat pack that's taken me two days to build. It's really rickety. There are two pieces left over. There are a square peg and a round hole. Who the hell designed this thing in the first place? Doesn't make sense. And the design, of the, the design of the flat pack really depends upon your abilities to put it together and your interest and motivation to put it together. I have to say to you, you're looking at someone who does, has no understanding of DIY at all, absolutely. And this is one of the, I think, one of the, the, the tricky things about the nature of the curriculum and also one of the tricky things about doing a 10-minute talk. If I had the whole day, I would be whacking you with little bits at a time with a, a little mallet. Now I'm going to hit you with a big mallet over the head uh, because the, the, the point about the story, the moral of the story, if you like, is that we ought to have worked out by now about square pegs and round holes in, in relation to national curriculum and curriculum development with children with SLD and PMOD, but I'm not honestly sure that we have. We're still trying to fit square pegs into round holes, and it's about time we stopped doing it. Um, I, I started off with a quote from Einstein. I'm going to finish up with one as well. The world as we have created it is a process of our thinking. It cannot be changed without changing our thinking. This was something that Penny was absolutely fabulous at, changing our thinking. And she is so sorely missed. Thank you.